I have over the years listened to many introductions of myself where people describe me as a lifelong Prince George, you know, and which is almost true. I'm, I'm told that I was born in New York City, I, I think in the Bronx, and that uh, my parents brought, brought me uh, down here when I was 10 or 11 months old. I attended Beaver Heights Elementary School, which was part of a natural progression of, um, I think, a new school scenario that um, was developing in you know, the segregated school system. And then from um, Beaver Heights Elementary School to Chevrolet Tuxedo Elementary School, which was anything but a normal progression. Um, that was the result of um, some initiative, um, not aggression, that my parents and others in the neighborhood undertook when we were kids. For me, it was personal. I felt like, you know, they're entitled to it. They live there, that school was closer. Um, I knew it was going to be a battle, mm -hmm. but it was worth it. Chevrolet was one of those communities that um, literally at the time was set, split by railroad tracks. Um, the side of the tracks that we lived on was mostly black. There were one or two white families in the community on our side. You cross the railroad tracks to the other side of Chevrolet where, to my recollection, there were no minority families. It was the white side of the tracks. And the two communities pretty much got along until the issue of integration came up. We didn't have many incidents, but we had a few. We had a cross burned on the yard and that type of thing. It was interesting to have to walk from our side of the tracks, you know, over the bridge to the other side and um, to attend school. We couldn't get a bus because we were one-tenth of a mile short of the, the um, well, criteria for getting a bus. But when we first started integrating the school, I was fifth grade, Wayne was fourth. At some point, because of people just driving by on the Old Country Road giving us the business, the um, um, black uh, community on our side of the tracks got together and decided to ask for uh, an escort from the Prince George's County Police Department. And for a couple of days, the way they escorted us home was we walked in the street, there were no sidewalks, and the county police car bumped us behind the legs as the two of us walked home. It's, it's been an interesting demarcation ever since. I measure uh, a lot of things in, in my own life from that period of dramatic change. You know, they had never been taught that they were less than anybody else. And would neither have we taught them, you know, any bias that we knew of. We couldn't, I look at myself and I look at these pictures and I said, we couldn't afford to. You know, we're the melting pot, so you just be who you are. There's always something about Prince George's County as a crucible, as a cauldron of progress that, that um, always was sort of calling me home. To run for county executive, um, is really consistent with his track record from you know growing up in Prince George's County and was illustrative of his care and concern for the county. He has that innate ability um, to to analyze and communicate what our needs are and to put deals together that are beneficial for the residents of the county. We, we achieved um a really fantastic deal for Prince George's County. In fact, I contend the best stadium or arena deal in the country ever. You put up zero dollars and get all of that stuff uh, out of an in initial um, financial um, seed for the sports and learning thing, which is literally a pre-Olympic center that n n nobody else has. In elementary school, um, you know, sneaking around, standing at the the fence at the swimming pool that you couldn't get into because it was segregated. And um, I just thought it'd be great if we had an Olympic pool for the community. So we got an Olympic pool for the community. Um, scholarships at Bowie State and 
um, you know, the foundation, the Learn Foundation and other things that, that were direct fruit of, of that deal. If you know him, he's a good guy. And he has a soft heart. He's a caring person. And that's why he's gotten into politics and done so much of what he's done. Find out how you can grow with Parks and Recreation. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Visit us at pgparks.com.